Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. All right, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, sports, and social media. We have a really cool guest for uh, this afternoon's show. I'm uh, quickly going to introduce him. He is an actor. You might have seen him as DJ Yella in the NWA biopic Straight Outta Compton, but he's also on HBO's Insecure, and he's also uh, been in one of my favorite movies, Never Back Down. He's on Netflix movie that just launched Sad Castle. We're with Neil Brown Jr. Neil, welcome to Pop Alternative. Hey, what's up, brother? Thanks for having me. No problem. So... Just like from talking to you on Twitter these past couple of months, it's just been crazy. Like for on your end, you've just been filming and doing a lot of PR. Like it, it must it, it must be just a storm from like for the last couple three months. So what's that been like? Just getting everything ready and filming everything and also promoting it. It's been busy. It's been busy. I'm I'm a, actually a, a lot quieter guy than than a lot of my characters. So I like my privacy and my alone time. Um, I'm very square. Uh, but um, so this has been, you know, having to be, you know, go, go, go. I'm used to going by my own schedule. <laughs> uh, but with the higher up you get, it's like, no, no, sir, this is your schedule. But these are high class problems. And uh, I'm fortunate to have them, rather be doing that than nothing. Uh, uh, so it's been crazy. It's been a lot of fun. It's all of us a dream come true because it's exactly what I, where I wanted to be. I just, you know, just you have to figure out that that output, that work output. Oh, here comes the wife now. Oh, hey, hey, hey! I'm on an interview with a lovely young gentleman here. Oh, sorry. Um, so my 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 children, my wife and kids, are about to come in and complain. Son, come here. No. <laughs> this is my this is my youngest right here. This is my baby. How's it going? Hello. It's What's going good. good. Go. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Well, wow, that's it, it, it from drivers. Everything all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drivers Ed. Drivers Ed used to be in school. Yeah, I know. That was a completely separate school. thing. Yeah. I took drivers Ed to school. What happened? What are we doing? No more civics in school. No more drivers Ed. No art. No no music. And we wonder why things are like people complain about the new generation. It's because you took everything from them. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I know. It, 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 it's funny too. Yeah, no, I remember when I did college too, our like gym was completely evolution. Like it was evolved into like it wasn't just gym. There was different gyms. You could have taken karate as your gym. You could yeah. take like so I remember that. Um just I like going from high school to college, everything is different and it's Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh getting back back to you and uh, your work um it, couple of projects that you maybe want to talk about. I mean, we know you, uh, we'll, we'll get to Strata Compton shortly, but you've been at HBO's Insecure. You're on Dirk Gently, which is also on Netflix, and Sandcastle, which is on Netflix as well. You want to talk a little bit about the projects um, that you've been that you've worked on, that you've been promoting lately? Now, all of them are special independently of each other. Is there any particular one you want to talk about? No. Was there one you want to talk story. about? Just, um, Sandcastle's out on Netflix right now. Uh, all the guys I work with, uh, Bonap, Glenn Powell, uh, uh, Nick Holt, um, Henry, um, Logan Marshall Green, all these guys, they were amazing. We all became like a little family unit. We we're very competitive. Everybody, especially Logan Marshall Green, see, he's really into sports. Everybody's very much into sports, very competitive. Mm -hmm. So while we filmed in Jordan, which none of us had been to before, uh, uh, it's a lot of dirt out there and dust <laughs> and rock. So we would find games to play with rocks that you couldn't, I mean, we, we just leaving some, some grown men alone who are really just big kids because I'm an, I'm an actor, right? I play pretend for a living. So essentially I'm a child, yeah. perpetual child for the rest of my life, yeah. along with every other actor, no matter what they say. And um, if you're doing it right anyway. And uh, so you got a bunch of big kids just together in Jordan with downtime sometimes on set and we would just, <laughs> The poor set dressers, because we just be throwing rocks and stuff. Like, all right, if you hit the can, it's about a hundred yards away. If you hit that can, first you got to hit that can, and then you got to hit the the box. You know, you play golf <laughs> with rocks. Um, 
we had a lot of fun making the movie was was very interesting like i said had never been to Amman before jordan the culture is different there it's great they had christmas there you know they don't teach you that in america it's like oh it's a muslim yeah they have christmas and it's got santa claus and all the lights and all the pretty things um really nice people great director fernando coimbra justin land um and um excuse me uh fernando coimbra and uh justin nappy who's the producer um it's it's I'm, I'm proud of it you know it's funny because I, uh, I, t I tweeted out that you were coming on the show and a lot of people, yeah, I recognize you from Straight Outta Compton, but three people came up to me and were like, at work, and were like, I just watched Sandcastle. That's awesome that you're having them on the show. Like, I just watched it on Netflix because it, it just, just came out on Netflix. Yeah, no, it just, just came out. And, and Enzo, the character I play, is a, he's a, have, have you seen it yet? You haven't seen it yet. Not yet. Yeah, no, Enzo. I have, no, it's all like, I, I will do it. Don't worry. I will do it. It will. It will be done by. It will be done tomorrow, probably. I guarantee. Yeah. No. I'm, I mean, I'm. I'm proud of it. I, I, my dad's a marine. Uh, he was in the Marines in, in Vietnam. My my uncles. Um, a lot of my cousins. My cousins are still in right now. I think they're going for their twenty twenty five. Um, you know, and I grew up with a lot of these. A lot of these guys. I was going to go to the military myself. So yeah. anytime I get a chance to do one of those stories. Um, I jump at the opportunity to do it. It, I, it was my first movie, Tigerland, was, yeah. a, was a military movie. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed them. I'm a big kid, man. You know, give me guns and running around, playing a little superhero. But the story needed to be told. It was based on the true story. Yeah. Um, and, you know, stuff doesn't always end the way you want it to. Life isn't a fairy tale, especially no. if uh, yeah. these got heroes just, you know, they put the, the ultimate sacrifice to life on the line. Um, and uh, portraying one of them was, was a lot of fun. No, absolutely. And uh, you were in a movie that uh, a lot of people have seen. I don't think I've ever... So we're straight out of Compton, Neil. I don't think there's one person that said, no, I haven't seen that movie. I'm pretty sure everyone that I know has seen that movie. Um, oh, yeah. It's yeah. just... It, to be part of that, you must think of that every day. Like, that. I can't believe that happened. Does, does, it, does a day go by where you're not thinking about the fact that you were in that project? Well, I... Uh... It's hard not to. Uh, no, I don't think so. Cause look, look, look on the top of the. If you can see. Oh wow! At the top of the thing, there's the MTV Award, but there's a straight out of Compton Platinum Record that it sent us. <laughs> wow! So you're reminded every day. Yeah, I'm reminded every day. I come out of my uh, come out of the, my side of the house. So um, what was it? So t take us through what you can. How how did the the role come like you know obviously you auditioned like everyone else did right and then you ended up getting the role talk about all that talk about how that was like like it must have been crazy to film it and was there any consulting with the real DJ Ella yeah yeah every day every day the NWA the, the, I think one of the reasons why the movie was so good is because we got the spirit of those guys by being around them every day um and they would show us videos and stuff from. When, when Eric was still alive, easy. Um, they, um, Dre, Q, Q was still filming right along too at the top end. So like the first couple of weeks, but as soon as he got done, he rushed back and he was on set every day along with his wife, a uh, wonderful woman. Um, uh, Dre, um, uh, Yella, MC Ren, uh, Antoine, it, it, they were there every day. Every day, every day, and and Antoine uh, Yella was very um, open with me, and, and you know he kept open dialogue with me, and you know we we text and we talk on the phone, we hang out, and uh, you know he was just adamant saying that I I got it right, um, like the spirit of it anyway, and then yeah. you know of course the lines aren't exactly the way they were, but some of the stuff that they really said in these instances we we, we recreated, um, I. I auditioned for the movie uh, because my friend Corey Hardrick, which is another actor, um, he kept saying, "Hey, this Straight Outta Compton thing is out, man. You want to get, you want to get on that?" And I'm like, I, "Who I'm gonna play in Straight Outta Compton?" I couldn't, I wasn't thinking, <laughs> you know, when he kept saying, "I was like, what? Don't play easy? Come on, man. <laughs> Something's not right." Um, and then, uh, coincidentally, my management. Call, when I finally hit, bugged me about it for like a month, and then when I finally said, "Let me call my people and say, see if there's something I can go do in this movie." The day I called them, they were calling me saying, "Hey, we got you this, this audition for this movie, straight out of Compton." And it was like for DJ Yellow, and I was like, "Oh, clearly I'm Yellow." And um, 
I got it. I prepared. I went in and um, I, I I crushed it, or at least I thought I crushed it, but apparently I didn't because it went nowhere. Shout out to Cindy Tolan. Cindy Tolan was the casting director at the time, and it just it wasn't. It didn't do anything. I didn't get the part. And um, then they casted the first three guys. They cast Corey and uh, um, Jason and, and um, O'Shea Jr. Which are perfect casting, by the way. Um, and then they came back three months later, and my manager was like, hey, I got you an audition. And I was like, what? And he said, straight out of Compton. I said, so that's a callback, right? And then he's like, no, it's a re-audition. It's a do-over. <laughs> I was like, what? Do-over? That's, wow, how humbling is that? Acting is a very humble thing. Like, yeah. You remind that people don't know who you are or care every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you know, you live in your own little bubble. You do these movies, and you're like, "Oh, I'm awesome, I'm famous." And people are like, "I've never, I've never seen it. And I don't know who you are." Sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Because there's so many, <laughs> but there's so there's so with Netflix too. There's so many fil- films and TV shows coming. Yeah, out, there's right? just so much content. Yeah. Um, so, so I got to go in with uh, Vicky Thomas, who was commissioned to cast MC Ran and Yellow specifically because they had the other three guys, and she they couldn't find those two. And I went in. And she gave me the business, which means every time I tried to open my mouth and say something, she said, stop, stop, stop. She kept cutting off my audition. It was like, do less. Now, that you talk about humbling. I'm going into the audition. Again, the do-over where I made sure that I was right. I made sure that I had it. And then every time I started to talk, she was like, uh-uh, stop right now. Stop doing that. <laughs> and, um, she eventually, you know, I, I asked her. I, she kept telling me to do less. Do less, and then I asked, her, do, you, "Do you want me not to just do? Don't do anything?" And she said, "Exactly, don't do anything. Just say the words." And um, I did, and you know, I got the part because um, I met Gary, if, if Gary, and the other three guys, Jason and, and the guys, um, like two, three days later. Um, there's more to the story, but I met them. They were there at the audition, and then I noticed there was nobody else for DJ Yellow. It was just me meeting with the director. And we, before my audition, we hung out in like the hallway for like an hour and a half, just talking, you know, laughing, cracking jokes. And it turns out that that was more of the audition than anything. Yeah. Uh, if we meshed. Uh, and, you know, I got the part, man, like a few days later. And, you know, I cried like a baby. I was super happy. You can't, a movie like that, you, you know, it. I've been doing this 23 years, but for a lot of people, Straight Outta Compton was my first movie for them. So this, this, yeah. this, this, this job is a, a real career it's a marathon right and so you have these ups and downs and, um it's, it's not until a movie like that push you out in people's faces and they're like oh my god this guy's great and if they look deeper they'll find movies go all the way back and they're like oh well 20 years to make an overnight success yeah. well I, I i knew who you were from never back down like i knew exactly who you were when i saw that you were announced for straight at compton so like i i i knew I knew. I was like, this guy was never back down. Because, I don't know, I have a weird obsession with that movie. That I, I love. I used to watch that movie all the time, Neil. Should yeah, I, never I, back I, down. I, dig, I watched it a bunch of times myself. <laughs> I was excited for it because I was a big Karate Kid fan. And I was like, oh, well, we um we made a Karate Kid for uh, for for the, the MMA age. Yeah. And, you know, of course, a lot of that stuff we were doing on that was just TV MMA. Like, <laughs> some of the transitions just don't work at the kids. Yeah. But um, um, in your ground game anyway, at least by the way. But uh, I thought it was cool and and and, and great and a lot of fun. We had all the soundtrack, man. I love the yeah, soundtrack. The sound- yeah, the soundtrack was dope. Okay. Like the soundtrack in a movie, they go together really well. They can even the first Fast and Furious, it's like you oh. know, <laughs> even the <laughs> Fast Fast Five. I, I I think when they brought like the Rock and the Fast, like the Fast and Furious, like the first one, mm-hmm. like the Fast Five. Um, yeah. I feel like that um, created, like, th- they had, like, a bunch of songs, because it was in Brazil, right? So they had a bunch of dance songs, um, and that was like, okay, now every time we make a Fast and Furious movie, the soundtracks have to be good. You can say the same thing also about, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Like, the first one that came out, the yeah. soundtrack was what a lot of people were talking about, the 80s rock feel. They did the same thing with the second one, right? It was made, so, you watch it, like, it, it was one of the things, like, you hear that song, every time I hear that music, I want to go watch the movie, like, right then and then. Mm-hmm. But I'm a big 80s, 80s buff. That's one of the things about Straight Outta Compton that I dug really well. It was like, yeah. it's essentially the 80s, 90s movie. Yeah. So got, getting to do a movie of the period um, really, really was really cool. You couldn't imagine that experience, dude. Like, 
I, 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 I can't imagine that. Uh, That's amazing. We had to recreate all the all the the album covers and that first photo day shoot day. I think we did like 16, 17 hours of just photos of dressing up and recreating these iconic um, uh, album covers and, and um, magazine covers and, and you know interviews that they did. And you know we got to be NWA. And when NWA was happy when we were performing because we performed our stuff live. Yeah. The extras didn't even, excuse me, the background didn't even know it. They thought they were listening to actual NWA. And we were getting tired and stuff. And they were like, oh, are you tired of lip syncing? And it was like, we're not lip syncing. <laughs> you know, well, those guys, those guys are going on the raps. I mean, I just was a hype man. Yellow, I, I did the records, <laughs> you know, yellow. yellow. I, went, I, I went to an event. We had Red Bull crashed ice here. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. We had um, uh, an after party with DJ Jazzy Jeff from uh, Fresh Prince of oh, Bel Air. Wow. And yeah, he yeah. had like a hype man. And it was pretty cool because like DJ Jazzy Jeff was you know, spinning in records, and then he just had a guy who was just like, make some noise, let's go, like, every two seconds. I yeah, that, <laughs> so that was you. That's hype man. That was like, well, Yella produced the songs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So that was the difference, but uh, outside of outside of uh, producing the music along with Dre, and, then, you know, he produced the albums after Dre left as well, so mm-hmm. he, outside of that, he they were live a lot of what they were doing were, were live cuts and live jabs when he was on the ones and twos. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he, he, he put in a, a, a lot of work and uh, they all did, man. They, they, you know, we, we did that movie and it was a little more glamorous, a lot more glamorous, a lot more party than actual life for, for those guys were. They, they came in from about eight to three to the studio from about eight to three and laid down a beat. And then from about three to six, the other guys would come in and rap on it, and then they go home. But you can't do that movie because that movie is boring. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the actuality of, of what it was. There was no liquor. There was no women. There were no girls in the. You know, they were at work. I think. And, the, yeah. yeah. My favorite part too is when they're because they're, they're showing the evolution of NWA. They're showing when Ice Cube when they did a solo, and then they're they're showing all of that right. And then you're listening to No Vaseline for the first time. Yeah, and they're oh, all look. you're all pissed off, and then Easy E's like, uh, he's like, we'll we'll just go to the studio, just end them anyway. Like we could do that. And you're just your character, just like, I don't know about that. <laughs> like that's one of my favorite parts. I don't no, I don't know, not with that one. That, yeah. that's a monster. Like no Vaseline hit so hard. I mean, every when we would have to listen to it while we were doing the scene, I was really like. It's a cold piece of work, yeah. But I grew up with the music. I'm, I'm yeah. I was older, older than everybody, all the other guys. Do you think that? Um, maybe this is a question more for like the casting director. But do you think that helped your case at all? Like, but that you kind of knew the material, and you were a big NWA fan. Or does that ever come into play think, when you're auditioning? I think so. I think it's. I think what what F. Gary um, was really happy about, and the reason why he was sold on on the work, he knew I, I put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of work outside of work. So he knew that I was always going to be professional and be able to, to delve into this character. And I was just good at my job. I do a lot of prep, you know, and my work doesn't end because I leave set. You know, I have a lot of, you know, I, I'm, I'm known for doing a lot of ad libs and coming off the cuff and stuff like that. Oh, for sure. um, but it's really actually planned out. I, I go through scripts. I read them three, four, five times and I find moments and I, I, I see different lines or if, if this this line was changed, I, would this intention be changed or can we put in different things there? Um, it's, 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 it's simple, but it's not easy. My ju- you know, acting. It's simple, but it's not easy. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to put in a lot of time and energy. So yeah. I would out three different lines no matter what the word said on the page mm-hmm. or whatever you know, scene we had when I come in and Gary would just be like, give me something different, give me something different, give me something, up. Oh, that's it, let's go with that. And, and then I've had a lot of actors on the show in the past too, like Steve Coulter, who is uh, Reg Monroe in Walking Dead, He's he was yes. on my show, and he was telling me, and like yourself, you know, you do movies, but you also do television, and then, yeah. you know. I did what, what the first season. Yeah, you did, and then the audition aspect of the television versus the film is different as well. Because some might be shorter, like that's that's different. Do you approach TV differently than you'll uh, you'll like approach uh, a movie, Neil? I'm sure that the answer to that is yes, well, right? Um, no, I don't know why because 
TV shows or extended films <laughs> just over a season. Uh, and and some of them are film films. Some of them are so long. I mean, television has changed so much now. Yep. Now we have, um, you know, just essentially many movies and they look the same. The TV shows, a lot of TV shows look just as good as the movie because uh, they're done on the same cameras a lot of times these days. And the only thing difference is, is I, I sometimes have more time to prep for a film uh, audition or meeting uh, than, than for uh, television. Um, but I come in just as prepared for, for both um, television even more so because, you know, there's the, the test. And, but there's so many of those. There's so many TV shows and so many auditions for TV shows. There's not as much for film. I'm fortunate to be able to do both. Um, I hope I can keep that going. But uh, I, uh, I keep I, – I, I, but I, I, st- I study for them the same pretty yeah. much. No, I study people... like, play, like, I, like I would treat a play. So I read it three times. And then I start to really understand the characters, and then I start learning the words. Yeah, well, no. Some people answer that question differently. Some people say, "Yeah, like I'll approach a, a movie different in the audition. I'll, I'll uh, pre uh, like prepare for a, like a television show. They do different, but yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, yeah, they do do a different pacing. The only thing, the real difference is the pacing on TV mm-hmm. is not as drawn out as it is in a movie." In a film, you have more time to let things sit because you're trying to do more like um, something that's more real to life. And whereas the television, it's it's quicker. Just yeah. Look. No, it but is. That's it. That's 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 the only thing. It is. Well, Leo, we're gonna wrap up soon, but very quickly too. Um, social media is a big part of our show. Um, you're an actor. A lot of actors are using social media. Just like very quickly, like what do you think about social media? Um, how, how have you been using it as an actor? And what do, what do you think the pros and cons of social media from your perspective are? Um, pros are. Um there's so much information like you said there's so many shows coming out a lot of times it people miss out on what's coming out it used to be back in the day it would take a long to you know you had the trailer for a movie would be on tv and you knew to go to the movie to see that you know you knew through that trailer to go see that movie but now the trailer's on your phone there's there's so much content i think for people who are fans of a certain actor or actress um, having social media is a way to, to, to connect with them and to know what's coming out and to, to hear about things and to pro- it's a lot of self promotion. Yeah. Um, the cons, I, I am light on the social media. Um, I, my fans, everybody on there has been really warm and I love that the fact that they're out there and I love engaging with them. But I think the con is the more an actor engages with, uh, social media, the more people know about that actor and the less they are apt to believe the character that they play in another movie or show. Because once you know how I really am, if I play something totally different than how I am, you may not believe it as well. And I like for people to be able to disappear into the role and not see me playing the role, but see the role played by me. Does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense. Um, that, that's awesome. But, I always ask because I have a social media background. I have a master's in communications and I studied social media I mean, and sports. Yeah. I wish my kids, I'm hoping my son, this is my youngest, I'm hoping he gets a master's in something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it, it's rewarding. It's, it's, it, it, uh, it, 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 it prepares you too for the, like, this is a lesson that people, because people are like, oh, yeah, you're doing a master's. Oh, you're not going to be, you're not going to use, you know, the actual material you studied for tests. It prepares you for yeah. the real world. Absolutely. It allows you to structure your day to day because there's so many things you do when you're doing a master's. You have um, your your teaching assistant. You have your classes. You have your presentations. There's so many different things. So it teaches you like to prepare yourself for big situations where you're working for a big company. I love meetings. You say that. I I I love what you're saying about the, you know education is a very 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 important thing and people yeah. say. Not everybody's made for college, that because people with learning disabilities get 4.0s in college. Okay, yeah. So it's not the fact that everybody's not made. Not everybody has the work ethic. Not everybody wants to put in the work to get through college. And it's yeah. a lot of work, and it's a lot of stuff you don't want to do. Life is full of stuff you don't want to do, and that's precisely the stuff you should do, so you'll be able to get to do the things you want to do. Didn't say that. that he said, do the stuff you don't do. Do the stuff you have to, so you can do the th- things that you want to. Everybody likes. Nobody likes to pay bills, but everybody likes to have the bills paid. So mm-hmm. you got to do the stuff you don't want to do so you can 
have the things that you, you want and do the things you want. You know? Yeah, so I mean, I'm proud of you for that. Good, good man. Thank good you. Man. I'm, my good. sister, my sister just finished her masters, and she's gonna go. She's doing a. She, I no, she's doing a PhD. Wow. So wow. yeah. Better. Yeah. So she's okay. doing that, which is, which is awesome. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, she did. Now you gotta go back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not you sure about that. that. <laughs> Maybe down the road, but uh, Neil, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank I really you, appreciate man. it. Um, and it's my birthday today, so what a birthday present what? you gave me. Yeah, hey, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just giving you the big news, eh? Masters, PhD, wow. birthday. <laughs> How about that, man? You're just knocking them down. I, I feel like I'm not doing enough with my life. I need to go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave this right here, and I'm gonna go apply for a new get my degree. I never finished my degree. I never, I never did. I dropped out because I had kids when I was 17. So I, uh, I had to go to work. You know, doing this uh, stuff. <laughs> but, okay. uh, man, thank you for having me, brother. No problem. It. Where can very quickly? Where can people follow you on social media? Uh, the on Twitter, the number one yep. Neil Brown Jr. Yep. And um. Instagram, the same one Neil Brown Jr. and uh, on on Snapchat uh, Neil Brown Jr. But right now it's kind of like nothing's going on because I'm at work and I'm working hard. But I'll be back engaging very soon in about two weeks. Perfect. So. Well, Neil, thank you so much. Thank, thank everyone you. who uh, checked out this episode. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube page and on iTunes and SoundCloud as well. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. This is PD Beats signing off. Until next time, we hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.